Welcome, my friend. And Colleen has sent us another package. And it's huge. And and I want to wait to be able to open it with you and film it. So, and mail call. Here's our box. Whoosh. I don't know why I deserve this, but she went ahead and sent it to me. So I will gluttonously go through this. Oh. Wow. So I'll read the first part of this. Um, it's really cool because now we have written provenance. So anytime that you find something, you can start right now because someday you will be in the past and someday will be in the future. And whatever you write down, whatever piece of paper that starts to, that starts to explain the journey, um, even if you don't know what the item's past was, you can start writing down where you found it, even if you're pulling it out of a bottle dump and start the journey there so this is this letter and the other one that she sent with the other package um are kind of like letters of provenance so i'll probably keep them with them i'm going to read this first part hi nate in this box you will find a few small medicine bottles and two larger bottles they were all gathered from dumps in the canal zone in the late 70s and early 80s the canal zone the panama canal was rich with all sorts of bottles from all over since ships sailed through the canal on the way to other places. Really cool. I mean, the Panama Canal is one of the pivoting geological, historical, you know, points that's changed our world. And just what it is, it's a choke point of the world. So can you imagine digging treasure down there? What she got to do, what she's sharing with us. So inside here, is like another treasure hunters copied off pages out of their treasure hunting book. Pages of reference, reference pages, that is really cool. Okay, so I will go through those. And, are you ready? Wow, really nice wrapping job on here. Oh, Colleen, thank you. Wow, these are in beautiful shape. Wow, I get a lot of bottles that are just gnarled up. Beautiful cork top, cod liver oil. Landman and Kemp Incorporated, New York. And it's beautiful. I was gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, it's a nice aqua too. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a nice aqua. Very clean, very little scuffing on the glass. And nice top on that cork top. Stretch bubbles. And yeah, the seam dies out like halfway up the shoulder and you can see the swirls of the blowing in the glass. That is really, I love that. That's a beautiful detail. It's, it's got hints of the rainbowing in there, but I've actually never found a bottle that has, has that in there. And it is a cod liver oil, Scott's Emulsion with lime and soda. That is a beautiful bottle, bubbles and everything in it. And look at that, the way that the, the lines come all the way down and the thinness of the top, that is a beautiful bottle. The texture on that feels really cool too. And it's again, a beautiful blue. You can see the green aqua of this one. So every silicate mix 
that they used to make a bottle in time will age and turn a different color. So these are showing their colors. Uh, which is fun too. But I just recently, I will show you that, made a nice spot for all my best bottles and brought them inside. That is beautiful. I do not have anything like that in my collection. It's embossed. It says Eno's with an apostrophe for ownership. Fruit salt. Never even heard of a fruit salt. Beautiful blue on there. And it has its stopper. I think it does. That looks like it actually fits. It's a fat neck on there. I'll show you. The blowing on it, the lines that came out in the glass. Yep, applied top, the seams only go halfway up the neck. And it's a big, beautiful applied top and then the glass stopper to go with it. And the lettering on there. And it is a different shade of blue. Wow. Wow and wow. And then to have the history on, they're not just random bottles. These came from the, the Panama Canal Zone, so. That is, that is really cool. We will use all this packing. I'll go ahead and clean it all up. No way. It's embossed. It just says patent on it. And it is the beautiful dark green warbly um, like warbles all over in the glass, like in the best way. Like it looks like a pirate bottle. Yeah, it looks like a pirate bottle. The glass is like, the glass is like ridiculously like, wow. Wow. The color on it. That's going to be one of my favorites in my collection. I... I haven't seen anything like that in anybody's videos, no matter where they're hunting. And it just makes you wonder. I mean, these things could have come from anywhere. And look at the lettering on there. It's that is top shelf, which is where it will live for sure. Wow. Well, these are going in my personal collection and these will never be sold as far as I have control over. And my kids, I have three kids. So hopefully someday they find these letters and yeah, there's still another bottle in this box. connected they have kind of the same color and the same rippling in the glass not the same top it's an applied top and the seam on this it barely comes over the shoulder it doesn't go up the neck at all oh and its bottom is like thick oh it says S A K L E H Sackler, Sackler, Bitter something, Bitter Cure, Bitter Cure. Oh, and there's more words in the bottom, but it is just the roughest, which is really cool. There's, okay, I'm gonna have to figure out what that says, but how beautiful is that? Look at the color on that. In the top, look at that top. That's like, was made like a marble all by itself. It may even be hand applied instead of machine applied, meaning that the bottom here was blown and then the top um, sometimes literally had like a hand applied piece put on. So yeah, this is uh, 
you know, 1880s, um, as you move up to the 1900s, the seam has gone all the way up to the top of the lip. So this is probably pre-1880s for sure. From the Panama Canal Zone, let's think about that one, the Panama Canal open, just wow. So Colleen, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. I am going to have to rearrange my bottle shelf or perhaps start a new bottle shelf because I was maxed out um, because I pulled all my best stuff to put it up there. And the ones that you already sent me and the things that you already sent me are already in my collection. And, um, and these are going up there too. And they're in the video now, so we've double documented it. And I might roll up the letter and make some of my own notes on the back because I'm now the next person in the process of provenance. And then so, um, thank you so much. And there is my bottle collection above my other collection. That is where these will live and I am going to devise a little wire that goes across there because I do live in big earthquake land. But yeah, those are all of my favorite treasures. Quick look, we'll go through that in another video. So this is an inlet. This is our little private south campground in my neighborhood here and it's the inlet of Lake Berryessa. This is where Pewter Creek goes in to fill Lake Berryessa. And it's about as high as you'll ever see it. This is actually all parking lot for boat usually. And why well, I ran to get the camera is because there's carp in here. They're like three feet long. They're swimming around in these shallows. This is only about a foot deep. They're probably all gone now. I could literally see them. That's crazy. There's so many fish jumping out in here. And that's the actual channel of the river is so far out there. And then the whole thing is full. Those are those gravel beds where if you've watched me in videos, we've been collecting gravel. That's down an eight foot bank. And so that whole channel is full. All out beyond those trees. And then it's usually dry land from the trees back. Yeah, the carp were all throughout here because there's so many things that have been flooded and holes. These are the old horseshoe grounds right here. So really good year. So the entire lake, this is one of the largest in California. And uh, the entire lake has this going on and this is great for all the wildlife and stuff because it creates so much habitat. Yeah, those are them out there. Oh, it is. Mars is trying to get... You bear. Oh, there's about a hundred carp in here. See how big those are? And they're just swimming through here. Just gleaning up everything, every drowned worm, I can see them all throughout there. Mars, are you trying to fish? He thinks he is a bear. He thinks he is somehow going to get... Look at the uh, carp in the... There's a carp in the background here. That is crazy. Do you see them down the channel down there? Just flashing around. That's them frolicking. Those are... Uh, this is the carp going up to the very edge of the water. Are you just mystified? He's mystified. He's like, I have never seen a fish full of, or a river full of fish bigger than me. He's okay. He sees a stick. He'll probably get the stick. 
Oh. He's in paradise. Because it's just a wonderland. That's what I was saying about habitat. Is It's just a wonderland. And they've been trapped for a lot of years during droughts and a couple of good years now of water. And uh, this goes for miles that way. And um, up into the canyons and stuff. And then a couple miles out this way to a huge, huge lake. And they're all up in here in the inlet. Oh. And Mars is literally swimming around out here. Don't worry about the carp. Um, I don't think he stands a chance, but he's convinced that he is going to retrieve a fish and come home with it for the evening. This silly, silly boy. But he can almost see he's actually running on the bottom. So that's why it's kind of fantastic for him. He's like, hmm. And for me, I can look out here and see them. And I know they're just carp, but there's always something awesome about swarms of three foot long fish right in front of you in the water. And yeah, we're actually coming down here to pick nettles out of these trees because it's usually dry enough to do that. And that's not gonna happen this year. I wish there was a way to show you the scale of these fish that are in front of us here. Oh, when I say a hundred, I mean a hundred. See that fish moving around there? That's a big fish. That's a massive log, it's as big as my car. Get the GoPro out on a stick. It'd be cool to snorkel under here right now because you'd be with giants in this flooded environment. Big fish.